Hey guys, welcome to another video. Uh, today I'm going to teach you uh, voxel destructions. Now that this tutorial is very hard, so I'll link uh, the open source version on the description for you to try. But I recommend you to watch the actual video because you can learn. Um, for unforeseen event, my girlfriend will be doing part of the tutorial. Be nice. Other than that, enjoy it. Because uh, that sure as hell the end when coding the system. Alright, see ya. First, we're gonna create a bin folder. This will let us recycle our parts instead of destroying them. Create a part. Add attribute breakable inside to true. Also, make sure it's incurred. Uh, it doesn't matter, but it doesn't, matter, it doesn't matter if it isn't, but I recommend you should. You're gonna create a remote uh, to call our module script. Create a, the module script and a server script. Next, you're gonna create a closing group. Uh, I know a lot of people have on them, but they will look useful for the tutorial. Uh, make sure all of the parts that you want uh, that are solid are solid. Let's get scripting. First, we grab the debris service. This service is used to automatically remove temporary objects after a short time, which is perfect for things like explosion in boxes. Next, we get a remote event from replicate storage. This remote is what the client used to tell the server that something should break. After that, we require the breaker module. This module contains all the logic for creating spheres, cutting parts into voxels and handling destruction. When the remote event is fired, the server receives the player who fired it, the part that was it, the position of the impact and the size of the explosion. At this point, the server creates a temporary sphere at the impact position. The sphere represents the explosion radius and is only used for detecting nearby parts. Before breaking anything, the script checks if the it part is already a voxel. If it isn't, a new folder is created in the workspace and named after the part. The original part is then moved into that folder. This keeps all future voxel pieces grouped together and prevents the workspace from becoming messy. The radius of the explosion is calculated using the size of the sphere. Then, overlap parameters are set up so the sphere itself is ignored during detection. The script asks the workspace for all parts inside that radius. This gives us a list of everything affected by the explosion. Each part inside the explosion radius is checked for a breakable attribute. If the attribute exists, that part is sent to the breaker module where it gets cut into voxel pieces. If a folder was created earlier, the voxels are placed inside it so they, play, so they stay organized. Once the destruction logic is done, the explosion sphere is added to the debris service. After a short delay, it gets automatically removed from the game. We then define a minimum size value. This is used to calculate a minimum volume, which helps 
prevents very small parts from being voxelized. This keeps the system efficient and avoid unnecessary work. Next, there is a helper function that checks if a part is large enough to be processed. It does this by calculating the part's volume and comparing it to the minimum allowed size. Another helper function looks for an existing folder in the workspace that matches a part's name. If one exists, it reuses it. If not, it creates a new folder. This ensures that part with the same name always end up in the same folder. The final function checks if an object is a valid base part, makes sure it's not Terran, confirms it's large enough, and ensures it's not already a voxel. If the part in, is in the workspace or shares a parent with other objects, it gets moved into a dedicated folder. Finally, the part is sent to the breaker module to be voxelized, even without an explosion sphere, allowing the system to pre-process or manually break parts. Alright, this script is written as a module so it can be reused anywhere in the game. That's where everything lives inside the breaker table. We also grab a remote event from replay storage. This is critical because clients should never directly modify the world. They only request destruction, their server decides what actually happens. The bin folder references, uh, it, the reference is used for recycling parts instead of destroying them because otherwise it would create lag when we use destroy. We create a recycle part function. This function is one of the most important from performance optimizations in the entire system. The part is anchored so it no longer uh, interacts with physics. Then it's moved far below the map at a point it's effectively gone from the gameplay. We don't destroy it, we just move it so far away that we can't even see it. And then we can use it in the future. This is the part where I didn't really go into. Uh, to reuse it, I basically just kind of put the object into non existent place. So. We create a put in bin, put bin object uh, function. This function exists purely to centralize where recycled parts go. Instead of scattering hidden parts all over the workspace, everything gets stored in a single bin folder. This makes debugging easier and allows future pooling logic to be added cleanly. Is voxel touching a sphere is only a function where uh, we perform a precise collision test between a cube and a sphere. The sphere being the place we hit, and the part, so the, the the cube, would be the part that is affected by it. Instead of relying on the physics or touch events, it calculates the closest point on the voxel to the sphere's center, then measures the distance. If that distance is smaller than the sphere's radius, the voxel is affected by the explosion. This math-based approach is fast, deterministic, and avoids physics inconsistencies. This is the best I could figure out. If the function is wrong, the entire destruction system fails. Either everything breaks or nothing breaks. So this is the best I could come up with. Hopefully it never breaks because I didn't have any issues with it. The check size function will uh, exist to prevent infinite sub subdiv subdivisions. Uh, each time the voxel is subdivide, we calculate the volume, and if it's smaller than a threshold, the subdivision stops. At this point, the voxel either becomes a debris or gets recycled. Uh, the random chance of debris adds visual variation, making explosions feel chaotic instead of perfectly uniform. 
the so big the bigger the, the explosion is the bigger the debris could be the smaller it is the smaller the debris could be the force applied pushes debris away from the explosion center simulating a outward blast Breaker that creates fear is going to be a function, not local, so an actual function, that, that creates the explosion sphere that drives the entire system. The sphere is not, the sphere is anchored and non collidable because it is never meant to physically interact with parts. It only exists as a mathematical reference. This design lets separates visual from logic. You can make the sphere invisible in production. I didn't make it to fool it. Get biggest size part is gonna be a function to uh, is gonna be a helper function to return the largest dimension of a part. This is useful uh, when deciding how aggressively something should be subdivided or when debugging in an event in voxel splits. Several running color part is totally optional. I use it to focus uh, how the subdivision, subdivision is done. Um, but if you want to make sure if it works, in, if it's working or if you want to try it, uh, it's just going to set the random colors to every single part so you can see which one is different. Um, I'm going to create some fractions I'm not going to explain yet. I will later uh, paste them. I, this video is going to be very long, so I didn't have the time to explain everything. Uh, just know that just know that those scripts, those functions will help for uh, voxel adjacency, SAS comparison, and merging. Um, again, I could not didn't have the time. Uh, I'm, I'm so I'm sorry, but you have to if you want to understand it, you have to read it by your own. All right. So to create, uh, to make our create our voxels, we have to add a function, an actual one from the module, uh, called breaker dot voxel. This is the one we use in the service script too. This function is the core of everything. When no explosion sphere is provided, the function simply splits a part into eight smaller voxels. This is useful for pre-processing or manual voxelization. Each voxel is created at the correct position using C-frame offsets, ensuring perfect special alignment in alignment. So if there's no folder at the beginning, uh, let's say a part is too big, uh, like the previous example, uh, it will just create a voxel out of it and not like survive like infinitely, just until like a bigger threshold. Uh, in our case, well, it was 20, I think. When explosion is sphere is present, the function first checks whether the subdivision should stop using the size check function. If the subdivision continues, the part is split into eight smaller voxels again. Each voxel is then tested against the explosion sphere. If a voxel intersects the explosion sphere, the function calls itself recurs recursively. This means only the parts actually affected by explosion gets more detailed. Areas outside the plane remi remain large and optimized, so we don't consume too much CPU or performance. 
If a voxel does not touch the sphere, it is checked it's checked against nearby voxels. If possible, it's merged back together. This prevents the world from filling up with tiny cubes everywhere. This merging steps this merging step is what makes the stem scalable. One final cleanup, uh, once all the voxels are processed, the original part is recycled. This ensures the only valid voxels remains in the workspace. We will create a last function uh, called breaker.breakat. Uh, this function is, to cl is a clean API for a client. This client destro doesn't destroy anything directly. It simply sends a request to the server. The server then performs that all logic securely. So again, I'm going to show you the uh, functions to paste. I didn't have the time uh, to explain it because this video is going to be way too long. But just know that it's for cal calculating and comparing and for the agency and everything like this. To activate the script, I'm um, using a shotgun gun uh, pre-made by someone. I looked up uh, where the gun points, where the bullet hit, so the position, and I activated the script with the following lines. Um, if you're not able to do it, or you just can't figure it out, uh, either download the open source and look how I did it uh, in the description, or ask ChatGPT because at this point it's too much of a precise problem for me to help you, I'm sorry. Lastly, I'm going to correct some mistakes, so just follow along and it should work. Alright, so if it didn't work for you, um, I would just recommend looking through this description. Uh, again, uh, you can just find everything I did, uh, it's open source, uh, but I do recommend you to really try it on your own first, and if it really doesn't work, you can't follow the tutorial, uh, you feel free to just look into the open source. Alright, see you guys.